Honorable Sean K. Richards, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister responsible for education, revealed that the Bastia High School Site Selection Committee, comprising of various stakeholders from different ministries, has already been established to address the building of a brand new modern facility for that school. He thanked parents, teachers and students for their continued patience. Ladies and gentlemen, the pleasure is mine this morning to bring brief remarks as we witness the official opening of the Bastia High School on this temporary site. This is indeed a proud moment for the Ministry of Education and the Government of National Unity. We promised and today we are here to deliver to the students, teachers, and the nation at large a brand new, healthy and safe environment for the Bastia High School. In 2014, the Bastia High School was on a shift system with the Washington Archibald High School. Some classes were housed at AVEC and others upstairs the Premier Dental Office. These arrangements posed some problems both for students and teachers of the Bastia High School and the Washington Archibald High School. The Team Unity government took office in February 2015, and one month later in March, the Ministry of Education began the process for the relocation of the Bastia High School. A health and safety task force led by representatives of the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health, was mandated to identify land for the temporary and permanent sites for the school. A subcommittee was established to design plans for the temporary buildings and explore the feasibility of using modular structures for the school. This subcommittee comprised of officials from the Public Works Department, the Ministry of Education, the Planning Control Board, the Bastia High School, and the Parent Teachers Association. The task force and the subcommittee held regular weekly meetings to address concerns and to put plans in motion for the relocation of the school. In August 2015, the Ministry of Education approached the leadership of the Anglican, Methodist and Moravian churches, 17 degrees, as well as the sports department, to assist with the housing of some of the farms of the Bastia High School. The institutions agreed and contractual agreements were signed. AVEC provided spacing for the third farmers for approximately one month, while the Washington Archibald High School provided spacing for the fourth farmers. The project, which was entitled Temporary Facilities for the Bastia High School, commenced in September 2015. The activities involved, one, moving wooden buildings from the eastern campus of the Bastia High School to Taylor's, south of the Beach Allen Primary School, where we are this morning. I want to thank in particular Mr. Dormouth Rollins, because when persons said that that particular building could not be moved, Mr. Rollins came forward and said, indeed, the building can be moved. He will have the building moved and the building is here and has been here since September of last year. <laughs> Two, preparing the Methodist Church Hall with movable partitions to house five classrooms. <laughs> preparing the Moravian Church Hall with movable partitions to house four classrooms. And I want to pause here again because we had contractors working past midnight to ensure that those partitions were in place so that when school reopened in September, everything was in place to basically ensure 
that the students can be as comfortable as possible. I think at times, Mr. Carl Francis, the Director of Public Works and others would have gotten fed up of my calls over and over again to ensure that things are in place that indeed the teachers and the students would be comfortable. Three, preparing, well actually four, preparing the cricket stadium at Warner Park to house five classrooms and the teachers lounge staff room. Five, constructing temporary wooden classrooms. Six, constructing bathrooms and staff room. And seven, other works such as drainage, landscaping, traffic control, etc. A shuttle bus system provided transportation for teachers to and from the different venues and an extended afternoon break session was introduced to allow for adequate time for teachers to move between venues from classes. I pause to extend words of thanks to Mr. Franklin Tyson, a young entrepreneur from the East Basti area who donated two buses to aid in our efforts. Our Ministry of Education and the Public Works Department worked arduously to ensure that the teachers and students operated in healthy and safe environments. However, our efforts were not without challenges. In November, the students and teachers had to vacate the stadium for the Leeward Islands versus Trinidad cricket match. Those at the Methodist Church Hall also had to vacate the premises to facilitate the hosting of the church's annual fair and bazaar. Of course, there was also the constant noises and the propaganda being peddled by the critics who have been against this project and who have been against the welfare of the teachers and students of the Bastia High School. Interestingly, some of them were invited here this morning, but quite notably, they are absent. The truth is that they don't care and never cared about the welfare of the teachers and students of the Bastia High School. The school management team had to initiate positive and creative activities to engage the students during the times of displacement. I pause to commend the entire staff, students, and parents for their patience, understanding, and resilience during those difficult times. Whilst the school was settled and operating at these different locations, work was in progress for this temporary site for the school. Three contractors undertook different aspects of the works. Inotech Services Limited of Barbados under the leadership of Mr. Anthony De Silva, was responsible for the construction of three classroom blocks, covered lunch area. And let me add here that the covered lunch area which you are seeing was built by Inotech without any additional charge to the government as it was not included as part of the original plan. Ali Construction, led by Mr. Keith Roy Dyer, was responsible for constructing the students' bathroom facilities, and Mr. Errol Williams of e and Construction constructed the staff room and staff bathroom. Today, I am proud to announce that all of the works have been completed to satisfaction, on time, and on budget. The school's fence compound is comprised of four building blocks with a total of 24 classrooms, one administration block with bathrooms for the staff. Other amenities include fire extinguishers in every one of the new classrooms, whiteboards to reduce allergic reactions from chalk dust, 
ramp for easy access to the bathrooms, railings and balusters installed on the elevated areas of the porches, enclosed garbage area, fans installed in every classroom, air-conditioned units in the staff room, benches installed outside of the classrooms, gazebo for students to eat lunch, water fountain on the new blocks, 24-hour closed-circuit cameras, and three water tanks in the back. Administrative area, which will now be used as a student support center. The guidance and counseling department and the school nurse will be located there. The classrooms constructed on this site can be separated and relocated to another site for use for other purposes once the new school is built. All of this accomplishment is indeed as a result of a number of hard-working and dedicated persons. Sincere thanks to the members of the Health and Safety Task Force and members of the subcommittee for everything they have done, including identifying the land for this temporary site. Words of commendation are also extended to Inotech, the subcontractors, Ali Construction, E and J Construction, and the suppliers for their commitment to the construction of a quality product in a timely manner. The contractors were very accommodating in addressing concerns. Special thanks to Mr. Anthony De Silva and Mr. John Thomas of Inotech. Thanks to Dormat Rollins, Keith James, Prime Construction, Mr. Keith Roy Dyer, and Mr. Errol Williams, and all of the workmen. Profound words of appreciation are extended to those employees of the Public Works Department who supportively work extra time to remove partitions at the Methodist Church Hall and Warner Park Stadium in the evening and reinstalling them early morning before the school day commenced. It would be remiss of me if I also do not extend the government's profound gratitude to the Masonic Lodge and the Boy Scouts Association for allowing us to use their lands. The Boy Scouts Association has given us over one acre of land to use free of charge, while the Masonic Lodge is only charging us $5 per year for using their portion of the land. I also convey our deepest thanks to the leadership of the Anglican, Methodist, and Moravian churches, and 17 degrees for their partnership demonstrated during this critical period in the life of the Bastia High School. Also worthy of commendation is the sports department for assisting with accommodation of our students and teachers. Additionally, the staff and students of the Washington Archibald High School must be thanked in particular for their continued support and sharing of space. Also, the Beach Island Primary School and AVEC must be thanked for allowing usage of their space also. There are some members of the public who indeed we are grateful to. Allow me to single out Mr. Charles Morton, who was like the contractor for this particular project. Charles Morton visited this site every single day. There are times I would be visiting, Charles would be leaving. I would have gone overseas, and by the time I came back, I can call on Charles to get an update. If one did not know better, you would have sworn that Scotia Bank was the financier <laughs> for this particular project. Mr. Morton, thank you. Thanks also to persons like Dr. Thelma Philip Brown, who would have been one of the persons from the very start leading the effort and indicating that indeed there is something wrong at the old Bastia High School. The Prime Minister has thanked a number of the teachers, the media personnel, 
who also ensured uh, that public scrutiny was brought to what was happening at the old Bastia High School. I see Senator Wendy Phipps, and I know she led the arbitration panel, which would have suggested that the school be closed and the students relocated to other locations. To all of the persons, I say thank you. To the various parents, guardians, who would have turned out at the stakeholder meetings, the PTA meetings that we had, who came, they gave their criticisms, they gave their suggestions, but at the end of it, I think that they worked along with the government, they worked along with the Ministry of Education and the administration of the Bastia High School to ensure that the process, the transition, has been as smooth as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, words of gratitude are not enough for the students, teachers, and parents of the school. As a token of our gratitude to you for your patience and forbearance, today we present to you a new healthy and safe Bastia High School. <laughs> These buildings are temporary structures and measures have been put in place to begin addressing the permanent school. A Bastia High School site selection committee comprising of various stakeholders from different ministries has been established. The committee has identified five possible locations and the various key factors have been assessed to ensure that the sites would bring the most benefits to key stakeholders connected with the Bastia High School. The government has made budgetary allocation of 10 million EC dollars for the construction of the permanent Bastia High School commencing in 2016. The Ministry of Education, and by extension, this Team Unity government has stood its ground and kept its promise of providing you, the stakeholders, with a new building, a clean and healthy environment. You have up-to-date facilities. Just last night, I paid a visit to the school to ensure that things are in place for today. I was accompanied by two persons, and as the two persons toured the facility, they commented that this particular facility is indeed even better than many other facilities they have seen here in St. Kitts and Nevis. The government has paid no effort in ensuring that you, the students, are comfortable. As the Director of Public Works said to you, I also want to say to you that care for the facilities. Care for the facilities. Resources are scarce. Money is not easy to come by. Just as you are here in need of a brand new permanent school, there are a number of other schools around the Federation asking for repairs to be done to those schools. You are competing for scarce funds. If you go across to the Beach Island Primary School, there is work to be done there. There are those of you who will continue to use the Washington Archibald High School for your specialized subject areas. As you go across there, there is work to be done at the Washington Archibald High School. They are asking for buildings to be painted. They have their own concerns about safety and security because the fence in the back is down and the government, the Ministry of Education has promised them that the fencing will be taken care of. You go over to the Kayan High School, you have a dilapidated building over there that students have to use. We have to repair it. And I can go round and around the island indicating to you all of the problems with the different schools, primary and high schools here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. You have been given a brand new building, fire extinguishers, ceiling fans. I don't think there's a next school in this Federation which has ceiling fans in every single classroom. There's not a next school in the Federation which has water fountains outside of all of the brand new buildings. 
as a matter of fact, as a Minister of Education, I have been accused of having a bias for the Bastia High School. But the Bastia High School has had special problems. And as a Minister of Education, I have had to pay more attention to the Bastia High School than any other school, even the school that I attended, the Sandy Point High School, the school in my own constituency. So I am taking this time again to plead with you, the students, to take care of this facility. So even after you would have been moved to a permanent high school, other persons can come here, meet this facility in still a relatively good condition and use it and enjoy it just as you have been able to do so. <laughs> Students, teachers and parents, you have an outstanding modern school facility. I urge you to collaborate and to maintain this beautiful structure and a clean and safe environment. On one occasion when I visited here, when only the third farmers were here, I recognized that the third farmers had been trying bottles and just about everything else outside of the windows for the classroom. I came here one time, students sitting inside of the windows. You have chairs, you have desks to sit in. You have a garbage area which have been provided for you. Please to use the garbage area. We encourage the students and the teachers to continue to do your best and perform at the usual high standards and even exceed expectation in your performance. Keep the name of your school high and make the nation proud. Ladies and gentlemen, it is therefore with a sense of accomplishment, pride and joy that I now declare the Bastia High School new buildings officially open. Thank you. Always remember that the Team Unity Administration is working for you. It is a government for and by the people. We will see you next week. Well, Mr. Williams, you practically said it all, but I want to thank the listeners for tuning in to another edition of Working For You, and we promise to come to you again next week and the following weeks of the year 2016 with more from the government of National Working Unity. For you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you.